says to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, right? Amen. <laughs> we came here to worship. We came here to praise. Amen. So I want everybody to do me a favor. Look to your person to the left, right, side, front, back, up, or down, and tell them you don't matter anyhow. I see
10. Okay? 10 out of 10 out of 10 out of 10. Amen. Like he gives each and every one of us each and every day. He gives us 10. And that's what I want to talk about today. As we move forward, I want us to focus on evangelism. Because all souls matter. And we want everyone we know to be saved. But I know God has so much mercy and grace. Many people, maybe some of this audience, feel like you're unworthy to serve God. You feel unworthy to bring people to Christ. But I'm going to tell you today that no matter what you've been through in life, your choices, the things that you went through in life, make you perfectly suited to serving the King. Because those unique experiences that you went through, you can help somebody else that went through the very same thing that you went through. And I'm so grateful that God's grace and mercy gives us chance after chance to get our lives together. But as we take a look at Paul in Acts 22, I want us to consider the life that Paul had what he used to be. And I think all of us have that story in our life of what we used to be before we uh, accepted Christ and his kingdom. So I want us to consider Paul first. And Paul was born in Tartan, born in Tartan, raised as a Roman citizen. His mother was a Jew. He was from the Jewish sect of the Pharisees, which y'all know anything about the Pharisees, they were very strict. So Paul was a man that was very versed in the law. As mentioned earlier, he was, he was taught by a committee, which was one of the master teachers of the day. At the time, the Jews had six master teachers, and Gabriel would have to be like the best of the best. It's almost like all of us have our favorite preacher and teacher that we like, right? Gabriel was Paul's favorite. So Gabriel had taught Paul everything you need to know about the law. But additionally, Paul was part of the tribe of Benjamin. Was one of was one of the tribes that was faithful to God when everybody else went away. He followed his mother's faith and maintained his Hebrew language. He loved the law so much that he had Christians beat up and killed. Imagine if you was in worship and somebody came here right now and said, "Are you a Christian?" And you said, "Yes." They will take you, lock you up, beat you down, and kill some of you. That's what Paul was doing. Paul was going church to church, house to house, looking for people he can kill. Anybody who obeyed Christ was his enemy. He wanted to hold on to the law of Moses, his mama's religion. His actions caused Christians to scatter abroad. But that was all part of God's plan. So although he beat up people to had them scattered, that just allowed the gospel to get to more places. I want to show you that God's plan will always happen. No matter what we try to do before we get there, God's plan will happen. But Saul did all these things to the members of the church. Had them killed, had them beaten, had them tortured. You see the records of people being turned upside down and sliced right down the middle. Paul was a horrible human being. Way worse than any of us in here right now. I can guarantee you that. But his conversion was so important because of that, because of all his past and all the things that he went through, that his conversion account is, is, is recorded three times in the book of Acts. Acts 9.22, Acts 22, and Acts uh, 26. See, Saul was on his way to Damascus. Why? He wanted to kill some more Christians. He got a letter to go out to, to that area, to Damascus, to kill and imprison more Christians. But I want us to recognize three things that happened to Paul. Three things that's going to happen to us in our life. Acts 22, 1 through 5, Paul shared the testimony of his past life. I call that the statement of testimony. Again, we all have that statement of testimony. Acts 22, 6 through 19, Paul gives his saved testimony. He talks about what Jesus did for him in his life. And lastly, Acts 22, 22, 30, Paul recognized his mission to share the good news that he was sent to teach the good news. But to see why Paul gave this testimony, let's go back to Acts 21. In Acts 21, verses 27 through 30, we'll see Paul was going into the temple to preach. But he was accused of four different things by the people. They accused him, first of all, of teaching against the Jews. Then they accused him of teaching against the law, teaching against the temple, and bringing Gentiles 
and to the temple. They said, man, you defile the temple by bringing these folks that's not Jews inside the temple. See, those folks are real prejudiced back in those days. But based on these charges, Paul was taken out the, out the temple and was beaten down almost to the point of death. And what happened was some Roman soldiers happened to see what was going on and came and got Paul. And the reason why they came and got Paul was because Paul was a Roman citizen. So the Jews had no authority to kill him. So in Acts 21, 37 through 40, let's, let's read that. Acts 21, 37 through 40. The Bible says, Paul was brought to the, uh, to the matter. He said to the camp, well, may I say something to you? And he said, do you know Greek? Then are you not the Egyptian that stirred up the trouble, a revolt, about 4,000 men of assassins that came out to the wilderness? So they accused him, Paul. He got accused of all these different things by the Jews. Now he's been accused by the Romans. Man, ain't you that one who had those assassins that tried to kill us? So Paul now is asking for the audience. He's asking to speak to them. To first of all, tell them, I'm not the one you're looking for. Also, to share his testimony of what Christ did for his life. And that brings us back to our text, Acts 22, where he's making a defense to this council. Again, he had this council that wanted to kill him, so he had to make a defense about why they shouldn't kill him. And his defense was given in Acts, starting in verse 21, I mean, starting in verse 1 of chapter 22. He says, Brethren and fathers, hear my defense, which I now offer to you. And when they heard what he said, addressing them in the Hebrew dialect, they became even more quiet. And he said, I am a Jew born in Tarsus of Sicilia, but brought up to this city, educated under the media, strictly according to the law of our fathers, being more saved for God as you are today. He was letting them know that although y'all are saved for the Lord, y'all say this the wrong way. And he had to make this point to them because he had a captive audience now. And he said that I persecuted this way to the death, binding them, putting them both in prison, women and men. When we talk about the way, we talk about those that follow Christ. Remember Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So anybody that follows Christ, they can call of the way. He said, I got those people in the way. I had them killed. I had them beaten up. I did all these things to them. He's given a statement of testimony. And he's given it to them in their own language to make it plain as possible. He could have used Greek or any other language, but he wanted to make sure that they understood his statement. I want you to do the same thing. When we don't evangelize with the lost people, be very clear. Don't be all high mighty like you never did anything in your life. <laughs> be clear. Say, yeah, maybe I used to go out to the club. I used to go gamble. I used to go do this or that. See, a lot of times, people think the people at the church are all perfect. So that's why they don't want to come. They don't realize most of y'all are going to rap this club. At one point in your life, right? But we have to be real with people and tell them the truth. Like, yeah, man, you know, one time, Bob was like, I told him about that. Well, look at me now, right? That's your testimony. Paul has given his testimony. Yeah, I was, man, I've had the Christians killed up, but now guess what? I believe in Christ. And that was his testimony. And again, all of us had that testimony where we were told from the flow up, living an unholy, unrighteous life. But look at us now, right? I know I share that testimony, but a lot of folks say, I ain't the only one. That's what I always point. And I know that's the case, but the Bible says in Romans 6, 23, oh! Have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, so that includes you too. Amen. Amen. We all have a past. And a lot of people have told me they feel weak by sharing their past. They don't want to let people have people look at them a certain kind of way. But I want to tell you, if you share the things that you went through and you came out on the other side, look what that's going to do for that person. That's going to really help that person. Amen. Person, you saying, I ain't never did this, I ain't never did that, I ain't never. Stop lying. You know you can be at the first person at the foot. But let people know that. Because again, they may be struggling with some things and you can help them out. They may say, I'm addicted to porn. And you will say, well, I probably never watched porn before, right? Be real with people. Whatever your struggles are, whatever people struggle with, 
Let you let people know. Why? Because you might can actually help somebody by keeping it 100. Many people don't do that, though. They want to act outside the body, but Paul didn't care about his past and telling people about all the things he did. Why? Because he knew he had changed. He knew that God had worked in his life. Yeah. So in Acts 22, 6 to 11, he said, But I happen to be on my way from the Damascus and do. A light flashed for me from heaven. And I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And I answered, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. And those that were with me saw the light, but they did not understand the voice. He said, What shall I do? Verse 10. And the Lord said to him, Get up and go to this master, that thou should be told what thou need to do at the appointed time. But since I could not see because of the brightness of the light, I came to this master being led of those who were with me. And Paul was blinded because he was trying to walk on his own hands. He was trying to do his own thing. He was going to do more disruption to the church and to the Lord's people. So when Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He wasn't talking about himself. Jesus had already been sitting back to heaven. He was talking about his church. And the people in the church is who he was talking about. So when you persecute people in the church, you're persecuting Jesus. That's what he let you know. He said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He saw him to hold on to his mother's lips. The thing about Saul, is until he obeyed the truth, he was still lost. Mama was good, but mama didn't know the truth. And he had held on to that law, he was going to be lost. But he had to find out what he needed to do. So Acts 22, 12 through 16, he's told. The Bible says, Now a certain man, Ananias, a man who was about to stand in the law, well spoken of the Jews, live there, came to me, standing nearby, and said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at that very moment, I looked up and said, The God of your father was quite appointed you to know his will, to see the righteous one, and hear the message of his mouth. He said, Now, verse 16, Now why are you delayed? Get up and get that tithe and wash away your sin. I want y'all to notice some things here. First of all, Saul was called out. He was called out by Jesus. He had to make a choice. He was called out to do his Lord's will. He could have did that or not did that. But he was called out. So are you. You have been called out. Called from the darkness into the woman's light. But I also want you to see this. That Paul had these religious experiences, yet he still was in his sins. How many people have you heard say, well, God talked to me the other day, had this great religious experience. I'm going to tell you that if you had that, you still in your sin to be able to obey the God. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Paul was. My love. Many people claim to know God, but they, they have never obeyed the gospel. See, Saul called on Jesus. Like many people say, I pray to Jesus, I, I fasted, I tarried all night, I heard all these different things all the time, right? He still was not saved when he did that. The Bible says in Acts 9, 9 through 11, that he prayed, he fasted, he did all these things, but yet he was still lost. He was still lost. He was lost until he did what Ananias said. And I said, get up, wash away your sins. And that's the only way you're going to be saved. In verse 1 and 17, he said, It happened that when I returned to Jerusalem, I was praying, I fell into a trance and saw him saying, Hurry! Get me out of Jerusalem, because they will not accept your testimony about me. See, Paul had did so much, and that's like some of us. Some of us, when we our lives are so tore up, that some people, they don't understand and recognize the change that we've made right now. You know what? Don't worry about them, folks, because God has a calling on your life. You just do what he says. He's going to take care of you. People are going to always hate on you, no matter what you're doing. Amen. Just live and do what God has told you to do. Paul was surprised that he received so much grace and mercy. Aren't you surprised sometimes that you're still here? That God is still blessing you? God is still working on you? God is still working in your life? But I want you to realize, though, Paul was sent for a purpose. He had a mob full of angry Jews. Now he can preach them what? The gospel. It wasn't no accident. It wasn't no coincidence that he was there. The Bible says in Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for the good, for the good of them that love God, 
to them that are called according to his purpose. Well. It's no coincidence you work with the people you work with. It's no coincidence you have the people in your family that you have. It's no coincidence that you people that you work out with, people that you have in social clubs with. These are people that you've been sent to to share the good news of God, to share the good news that Jesus has died and was buried and resurrected. God has put these people in your path, in your way, not just for any reason, but to save them. So it's important that we realize that we got a mission. Why? These people will listen to you. Verse 22 said, they listened to him up to this statement. When they raised their voices and said, away with this man from the earth. He should not be allowed to live. They were mad at him, but guess what? They still listen. You might have people that are so sick, you tell them about the one Lord, one faith, one baptism, but guess what? They're going to still listen. Even in their anger, they're going to be upset with you, but guess what? You got to the truth. But the Bible says uh, uh, in verse 24, the commander was bothering him, but he told him, wait a minute, I'm a Roman citizen. You don't have the right to do so. So they continued to listen to Paul and fight their anger. But the whole point of it all was they knew they couldn't kill Paul. They had to take him back to Rome. So God not only took care of Paul, but now he gave him a whole other audience to go preach to. The Lord has been working on some of us for so long. It's time for you to answer that call. That God has given you the same testimony. When you can tell people, yeah, I used to do this, I used to do that, but look at me now. He's giving you the same testimony in verse, the, the second set of verses where he said that Jesus, look what Jesus has done for my life. And he's also giving you that same testimony that you have been sent. Paul was sent to the Gentiles. You have been sent to the crowd of people in your life. You don't have to go away to Africa or China to find somebody that's not saved. You got husbands, kids, folks, family, homeboys, homegirls, everybody. But you know, you know a lot of folks that have not obeyed the gospel. So you have a mission. You might say, well, Brother Gray, I was not there. I, did. I don't care what you did. You haven't done no worse than Paul. And the Lord still accepted him. The Lord still wanted him to serve in the kingdom. He wants you. He loves you. Loves you enough to send his son to die for you. His son was in the riches of heaven. He came down because he loved you and I so much that he was willing to die. Are you willing to share that good news with somebody? So many people, we, we get a new car. Oh, we call it everybody we know. <laughs> get a new house. Oh, well, come check out my new house. Right? Yeah. How many people are we sharing the gospel with? How many people are we telling them? I was sent to you to share the good news with you. I was sent to send it to you. Paul was sent to the gent. You are sent to the people in your life to share the good news. Amen. You're not a member of the body of Christ. Paul says, faith come by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. You must believe he is a reward of those that seek him. You have to repent with 13 and 3. You got to turn your life around from the sinful nature of man to the loving arms of God. You, gotta, you can do all those things and still not be saved. You must be, Romans 6, 3 and 4, you must be baptized. You must be baptized to replicate what God did for us. He went on that crew across the cavern. He gave up his life. He was buried and he was resurrected. You replicate those very things in Romans 6 and 4. Let's do that. Let's go there. It's a long last I promise. I'm going to get you out of here. I know some of y'all already eat and everything. I see it in your face. <laughs> This scripture is most important in the whole text. Let's get there. Romans 6. I want to tell you how to be saved. Because Jesus is coming back one day for those that belong to him. Those that, that are in his kingdom. The kingdom that he has called that was persecuted. The church that he was talking about. One day he's coming back for those people that's in that, that church. But he's only coming back for the Savior. Jesus can only save those who put themselves in the same position. If you have not put yourself in the same position, then Jesus will be a liar if he saved you otherwise. Right. And the Bible says in number 23 and 19 that he is not a liar, not a man that he can lie, right? All right. But Romans 6, 3 and 4 tells us how we can replicate Jesus' life, his death, his burial, and resurrection. The Bible says in Romans 6, verse 3, <coughs> do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Jesus Christ have been baptized 
baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him through baptism into death, by Christ was raised up from the dead to the glory of the Father, so you too may walk in a new life. Today is your chance to walk in that new life. Today is your opportunity to give your life to God. If you've not been baptized, none of these blessings and mercies and grace go to you. You are outside of the relationship you need to have with God. To get inside, let's be. You don't need this chance to respond right now as we sing the same devastation. <laughs> 